Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, peace be with you. Welcome to Huda TV, and we're still uh, entertaining ourselves uh, with the company of Dr. Murad Hoffman. Uh, and tonight's topic is uh, the Western who uh, accepted Islam. Uh, Dr. Hoffman have written a very beautiful uh, book about uh, the new uh, uh, Muslims, Islam in the rise. And we would like you to mention some of those, uh, uh, let's say, Muslim celebrities or names and something about the book. Europe has developed Islam gradually during the first half of the 19th century, thanks to a few important personalities, like René Guénon, who was a French mystic, uh, Friedrich Schuon, who was a Swiss uh, mystic, uh, Mohammed Assad was one of those. Uh, these were pioneers without much impact on the general public. This has changed after World War II when there was a massive immigration of Muslims uh, from India to Britain, from North Africa to France, from Turkey to Germany. And since that time, uh, we have uh, another kind of Muslim leaders who are academically trained, but rooted in a Muslim ummah. Uh, Muhammad Assad and these people had yeah. no uh, ummah, no roots like that. Lord Headley is one of those Westerners yes. who embraced Islam in the 20th uh, century. So he has written you know, three very nice books. Uh, they are A Western Awakening to Islam and uh, Three Great Prophets of, uh, of the World. And also the, there was uh, another book uh, about the affinity between the, the original Church of uh, Jesus Christ and Islam. Mm. So uh, they are all available on the net. Have you come across uh, these books? I have not read them, but I have come across him as a personality. So uh, these books, have, uh, I've read them, so they are very nice, and, and good things are mentioned about Islam and Christianity and Judaism. Mm. So they are very good books, really. Talking about the books, uh, uh, the Islam on the rise, it wasn't only a rise, but it was, it was very noisy to uh, Europe. Why? <laughs> There's a big uproar, really. In, in, in yeah. my case, uh, um, already when I wrote Islam, the alternative, uh, this caused a, a very great uproar in Germany, and my whole profession as a diplomat was put at stake. Um, they sent a, a delegation to the embassy to find out whether I had forced all women to wear hijab. <laughs> <laughs> Even... <laughs> and things like that. So, um, so do you think people? It, it was only the title which it was bring this uproar. The to title uh, more than the content. More than the content. When people finally read the book, uh -huh. they found out that there was nothing unconstitutional in it. Would you rethink really of changing the title now? No. Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still think that I Islam is the only alternative Europeans have. The churches are on their way out. That pope will help finish <laughs> the, the Catholic Church. Yeah. Yeah. And also, yeah, we're talking about the, the, the new converts or the Europeans who embrace Islam. Uh, have you met with uh, Maurice Bucail, a, yes. a French physician, yes. who wrote you know, a very nice book and he yes. did some, some research and study on, on Pharaoh's uh, mummification and proved that you know, the, the Pharaoh's death yes. and drowning was yes. proved in Quran. And, yes. and, and there was no any mention of, of that story of, of, of his sinking and right. drowning right. in, uh, in uh, Judaism or in Christianity. Yes, uh, Moses Bukai was very important. And uh, the, his major book is also quite successful in German translation. Mm. 
And uh, did he, um, uh, you know, uh, announce his Islam publicly? His conversion? I'm not sure. Because there are some professors and some people they said that he he announced his Islam and mm. uh, not some people met him also. They approved this and said mm. that uh, he embraced Islam and he. Uh, but uh, I haven't come across anything, mm. you know, like mm. like that. How about also there are other Muslims uh, celebrities uh, who are not. Uh, authors or writers, but sometimes sportsmen or women, uh, um, uh, artists also. Yeah. What's their impact to the public compared to, uh, to, to the other intellectuals who have uh, uh, their, 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 uh, their, their cultural artifact as books and uh, literature? Mm. Um, we have a, a German Muslim called Muhammad Siddiq who has specialized on bringing new converts to Mecca for Umrah. And each year, he accompanies hundreds of converts to Mecca. Is he a boxer? Or the other one? No, he's no. not a boxer. Uh. There was a boxer who is also active. Okay. But Muhammad Sadiq does a wonderful job mm. by introducing new converts immediately mm. to Makkah and al Madina. Wow. Mm. That's a good case. Uh, and also, these uh, Europeans uh, reverts, they have written some of them the translation of the Holy Quran, like Muhammad Asad and uh, Marmaduke uh, Pikthal. Mm. So, do you find any difference in their translation? Any Ma major difference? Many differences. We have a German Muslim called Ahmad von Denfer, who translated the Quran into German word for word which means it's not a translation into German. Okay. It's a translation into German words. And people get disgusted when they are confronted with, with a text like that. Um, uh, currently, we have six German Quran translations made by Muslims. Six. About and, Pixel and Muhammad Asad. Yeah. So have you come um, across some of the things about them? or? I like the text of Pikthal better than Muhammad yeah. Asad's, but I like Muhammad Asad's commentary. Yeah, commentary. Yeah. Was because Pikthal uh, faithfully translates the style of the Arabic. Uh, the Arabic is sober, concise, short, and without adjectives. Yeah, true. And Muhammad Asad needed two lines for the same text in order to introduce all the meaning, the possible meanings, they should have, he should have done that only in the footnotes. He should have left the text as crisp yeah. <laughs> as the Quranic text is. Yeah. So do they keep the contest or the context of, of the meanings or they, just, they are just translation without taking care of, of, of the context? The translation is word to word or? Uh, who? For Who's both of them, Pikthal oh, and Muhammad oh, Asad. Pikthal is much closer to the yes. uh, context. Context, yeah. Context, yes. yeah, yeah. It yeah, shows concise right. and it takes the yeah. direct meaning of the mm. verse. You don't need mm. a footnote with the Pikthal. Yeah. And also about uh, how many books have you written on Islam? Uh, Me? Or, yeah. 13. 13. Are there some, some uh, new books for the last uh, two or three years? Um, the last one was a collection of um, lectures I had given. Mm -hmm. are, are they all, all of them published and translated in, into Arabic yeah. and other languages, or they're only in, um, in German and English? All of them are in German and English and Turkish. But not, and not Arabic. most of them in Arabic, and one is only in Arabic. <laughs> What is the hat? Uh, which I wrote only for the Arabs to, to, to read that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had an, a, a copy which I gave uh, to the organizer yesterday. Um, it's a. It's about what? It's a it, uh, topic is generally. It's a, about uh, critique of the uh, Muslim's way of looking at Islam in 
in the Arab world. Yeah, we'd love to see this very soon. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> sure. uh, authors like you who uh, became Muslim, they all share one thing, which is writing about Mecca. <laughs> Why? Well, once you have been to Mecca, you develop a nostalgia for it. You are homesick for Mecca. You don't want to return. Uh, when I took my plane back the first time I went to Mecca, I said, now the plane can crash. <laughs> but then I thought of the others. <laughs> So, what is so magical about Mecca? Um, it is not the Meccans. Uh, it is the total devotion of the pilgrims. Some of them, many of them, have saved half of their lives, have gone to great hardships. Uh, and this is... F uh, some of them, they, they start weeping when they see the mosque for the first time. I've seen people weeping just but with the touchdown of the yeah, airplane. Yeah. And why do you think God made this change by a trip to that holy land? Wh uh, why? Does it have to be a trip? I mean, I'm just thinking about the, since you have written mm -hmm. about Mecca, why does it have to be a trip to uh, this holy land? to make a change in the life of the people like you, who said, that's it, after Mecca, let the uh, plane land peacefully. <laughs> There's no other place in, in the world, not Santiago, mm -hmm. not Rome, where there is this total feeling of brotherhood. People left and right of you all the same. With a total devotion to the same. And you, you feel immediately at home. It was your first impression uh, when you saw um, Kaaba. The first time you, you saw Kaaba. How was your feeling and impression? Um, do you remember it? I, I do remember it. Uh, you, you walk for so long and then you see a bit of it and finally you, um, cl you come closer. Uh, I thought of all the people who all the centuries, down to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who touched it, who surrounded it. Yeah. And I felt as if this was the focus of the world. Oh, I see. And it is according to the scientific facts and scientific researches also that uh, Mecca is, is the center of the globe and the earth. Mm -hmm. So, not only that, but uh, God had mentioned that the love of this place is in the heart of each of and every one for of mankind. Uh, uh, God said in the Quran, uh, "This is the supplication of Abraham." Let the hearts of some people fall in love with this place. Mm. So, I've seen uh, many non-Muslims who are now watching from the Saudi TV, uh, and everybody's taking to, to other satellites. They, 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 they really love this. I, I, sometimes I cover this life, and I get phones from non-Muslims uh, who are admiring the, the, that show, which is the, the Great Hajj. Mm. The first time I was there in 1982, uh, I wanted to be alone there. So I set my alarm clock for 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> and when I arrived there at 3, I was among thousands. <laughs> I see. Yeah, and uh, also about, if I just quote uh, what uh, Lord Headley said uh, to the Christians, and said, uh, if you are, uh, you are not a good Christian unless if you are a good Muslim. He means that, uh, all Christians, they claim that uh, we're following Christ, but they don't. Because uh, whatever Christ brought of the, the, you know, like instructions and whatever the traditions, they're not following them. So he says that if you Christians, if you follow Muhammad and if, if you become Muslims, so you are the, the, the real uh, Christian. <laughs> so it is uh, something amazing that he mentioned this point. Uh, to the Christians, so uh, I don't know whether 
the Christians, they don't know if they embrace Islam. So they're not going to lose uh, their Christianity. No. So they will win both. That's why we say we revert. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's and right, people, yeah. as a matter of fact, I've seen the, the closest people to Jesus Christ are Muslims because they are following his uh, way. I mean, look at the way that we look. I look like him. He has a beard, I have a beard. He's wearing all of these weird clothes. I'm wearing the same weird clothes. <laughs> his uh, mother, Virgin Mary, is wearing a scarf. This is our, all the statues in Europe carrying the same picture. You've heard what the Minister of Interior in, of, in Italy said. We can't take the veil unless we take it from, uh, from these statues. Uh, something similar, to, very close to what the, uh, he said. He prays and we pray, he bows and we bow, he prostrates and we prostrate. And he, he was a Semite. He's a Semite and he doesn't drink alcohol, we do not. He doesn't eat pork and we do not. I mean, if you follow the tradition of Jesus Christ and see the tradition of Muslim, you will see that the closest people to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, are Muslims. And because the reason is that he's the brother of Moses and the brother of Muhammad, peace be upon them all, and they come from the same school. What secularism did is it pushed those who have chosen secularism away from the tradition of all the prophets. Right. What's your, what's your comment? Yeah, that's absolutely right. I can only say that's how it is. So because we cannot uh, be Muslims unless if we, if we do not love uh, Jesus Christ and Moses and David and all, all of the prophets and, and also uh, uh, Mary. Mary is, is uh, there is a chapter, a special ch chapter in Quran with mm -hmm. the name of Mary. So uh, we, we respect, and the Muslim, the Quran, respect the, uh, all of the prophets. And uh, so they are all our prophets. If we, uh, if we talk about the prophets, we don't make any difference between them. No. We should not make any differentiate between uh, the prophets. They, they are all the same. They are all the messengers of God, and they are sent to deliver the message of, of, uh, of uh, Islam to the world. Because there is a problem that when we come out uh, and speak like that about the prophets and Mary, we run into the difficulty that Mary has been deified by, by the Christians virtually. They have not only a trinity, they are right, four. Yeah, four. And uh, that is a handicap uh, because we have to say, yes, Mary, but... <laughs> yeah. But not this, not that, not that. That's right. Talking about the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and Jesus Christ, uh, because you live in both cultures, you know who is Jesus Christ for Muslims. We as Muslims, we don't know what's the picture of Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Europe or in the West. Mm. How do they look? Uh, like, for example, we say, Isa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do people, do they think of Muhammad as a historian reader, as a liar? who came as a prophet. Mm. How do they look at Muhammad, peace be upon him? Um, Michael Hart wrote a, a book about the yeah. most important people of history, putting person, yeah. Muhammad in place the one, first, yeah. uh, as the most successful, mm. because Jesus was executed. Uh -huh. uh, but he developed a state and a religion, and he was head of the army, and. But aside from that, there is no great historical personality more denigrated mm. than Muhammad in the Western view. Amazing. Um, nobody would say in anything bad about uh, the, the Chinese uh, wise men mm -hmm. or any of the Jewish prophets. It's only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on whom you can throw virtually dirt. Uh, there have been attempts to, to explain that. Uh, one is that the Christians were insulted that another prophet should come after Christ. It must be an imposter. Huh? The second thing is that he was married and had um, more women. Mm -hmm. So he was... Uh, he doesn't befit to yeah. our culture. And then he fought wars instead mm -hmm. of being pa pacifist. Uh -huh. So 
there are enough elements to explain why this could develop, but it is still beyond me to which extent this, this hatred uh, developed. Only in the late 18th century did Germans start questioning that wrong image of, of the prophet. Mm. And Goethe was one of them. Mm. And less 